Hi everyone, it's Karen from the Geordie Grandmore. Today I thought I would give you an update on Warren's treatment because I haven't done that for, I think it's about three weeks now. Um, and I know a couple of people may be wondering what's happening. So for anybody who's new to my channel, my husband Warren was diagnosed with mantle cell lymphoma at the beginning of July this year. Uh, that is a form, it is a rare form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and it is treatable but it can't be cured. He opted to go with a harsher treatment which is called the Nordic Protocol which is um, six sessions of chemotherapy spread out over 18 weeks and then a stem cell harvest and transplant. So he had his, he had round two of his chemotherapy um, three weeks ago and he was fine for a week and then he got a temperature. It was about half one in the morning and he got out of bed and, and I, I woke up because I'm a very light sleeper anyway and he said he wasn't feeling too good so I took his temperature and it was 38.1. Now we had been told that if he did get a temperature that went over 38, we had to ring the chemo emergency line, which I did. And they told us to take him to the accident and emergency department. So I rang my daughter at half past one in the morning and said, can you give a lift to the hospital? Um, I said, don't panic first. Uh, and we took him to the hospital he had what we call in a spiky temp so his temperature was going up and then coming down a little and then going up again and every time it went up he would feel very weak have like very hot sweats um, and feel sick so he went to the accident and emergency department and then during that day the admitted him to the admissions ward at our local hospital, not the hospital where he was having his chemo treatment, which is about half an hour away. We did think that once he'd been settled in our local hospital, which is only five minutes away, then he would have been transferred to the hospital where he was having his treatment. But that wasn't to be the case. So he ended up spending eight days in the local hospital. So it turned out that he had an infection in the pick line um, and his pick line is the tube that goes into his arm, feeds through to just above his heart and that's where they give him the chemotherapy. He had an, infe an infection in the pick line. So they had to give him antibiotics for the eight days uh, and his neutrophils were really low. The, future, the neutrophils I think are what help make the white blood cells don't quote me on that, I'm not a medical person, but when the neutrophils drop, the immune system is pretty much non-existent. So everybody has to be careful when they're near him, everybody has to wear masks. He was in a room on his own, they had to wear a mask when they came in. Now Warren found this time in hospital extremely frustrating after the first couple of days that after they'd given him the antibiotics, he was feeling better, but he couldn't um, come out of hospital because of the neutrophils and the immune system and trying to sort out the infection. So everybody was supposed to be wearing a mask when they went into his room. There was a notice on the door to say, you must wear a mask. And he got so frustrated with the amount of staff, doctors, nurses, domestics, that didn't put a mask on. And he kept having to say to them, can you please go and put a mask on? And it's quite amazing, you know, the, the notice is on the door, the door's shut, the notice is on the door, put a mask on, how difficult is it? So he was getting quite frustrated about that. He's seen, I don't think he saw the same doctor twice over the period of eight days uh, until the last day where his consultant, who was giving him the treatment, in charge of his treatment, came in to see him. He'd been on holiday, which was possibly why the the confusion was um his consultant who's handling the chemo works between both hospitals so 
that was useful that he came in, but he said if it happens again to take him straight to Sunderland, which I would definitely do. But he'd been in hospital over the weekend, so he'd had a, a blood test on the Friday and he didn't see another doctor until the, I think it was the Monday morning. The doctor came in without a mask on and Warren said, you need to wear a mask. And the doctor said, oh, your neutrophils are fine now. You don't need masks. He'd actually been moved from the ad admission wards to a surgery ward. And apparently they didn't realise that nobody had to wear a mask anymore, which <laughs> was like, does nobody know what's going on? It was ridiculous. So I would definitely take him straight to Sunderland again. But he came out of hospital anyway, um, and he was feeling a lot better. And then he had to go into round three of his chemotherapy yesterday, which was just done as a day patient. Now the chemotherapy is in six rounds. Round one, three and five is the less harsh round of chemo. And two, four and six are the harsh rounds of chemo. It's to do with the different drugs they use. So he went in yesterday just as a day patient for round three, which was the, the less harsh. Um, he did have a slight reaction to the, the drugs that they were giving him yesterday. So his temperature kept going up and we thought he might get admitted, but that didn't happen. So I was able to pick him up and bring him home at about, it was about five o'clock, half five last night. Um, he did fall asleep on the settee and he felt, he said he felt cold, but he felt clammy to touch. And I was taking his temperature and his temperature was going low. It was 35 point something. Now nobody's told us what to do if the temperature is low. So that is something I need to check with the doctor. But luckily it went back up before uh, we went to went to sleep that night and he's feeling fine today. He has got a series of steroids to take. He's taken 20 steroid tablets a day for five days. Um, so they do pick him up. They make him feel a little bit more energetic and he is feeling much better today. So fingers crossed, touch wood, all of that stuff that uh, we won't have any hospital admissions before his next treatment in three weeks time. We also, he came out of hospital last Tuesday and we had to go and see the consultant at a different hospital again that is going to be in charge of his stem cell harvest and transplant. Now we didn't know much about this. The reason why I'm talking about all this is because number one, it, I feel like it helps me. It is a little bit like a diary for me, this, to get it all off my chest. And if I can help anybody else, if this, what I'm saying, helps anybody else going through a similar situation, then, uh, you know, that that's a good thing. So that's why I'm telling everybody all of this. So we went to see the consultant who was going to be in charge of the stem cell. We didn't know a lot about it. And apparently... After he's had round six of this lot of chemo, he goes in for one day, maybe two, to collect the stem cells. And how they do that is they take the blood out of a tube in one arm. It goes into a machine where the machine separates the stem cells and puts them to one side. And then it puts the blood back into his body through another tube. Once they've collected the stem cells, they then freeze them. And then at some point after that, this is going to be at the end of November. So at some point after that, he has to go back into that hospital where he had the stem cells collected. And over a week, they are going to give him a really big blast of chemo, which we didn't know. Um, this is going to be a much bigger blast than any of the ones he's had before, which is a bit worrying in itself. And then they put the stem cells back in that they've collected. So they're putting his own stem cells back in. The reason they do that is when you have a big blast of chemo, it can make your it can make your white cells drop really low, your neutrophils drop really low. Again, don't quote me on this, I'm not a doctor, it's just what I'm remembering from what the consultant told her. And when your neutrophils are really low, you you've got no immune system basically so they put the stem cells back in 
otherwise it would take months to recover from that big blast of chemo so when they put your own stem cells back in it hopefully doesn't take as long so once he's had that week of the the chemo and the stem cell transplant he then gets sent back to the hospital where he's had the rest of his chemo treatment and he's going to be in there for about two to three weeks in isolation room while his immune system is boosted back up his neutrophils are boosted back up and he's not susceptible as much to any infections then the consultant said to us it was it was quite she was very straightforward and she obviously has to say say these things but she did say there is a chance you could die which is it is a real shock she said it is only a two percent chance but if you get an infection during that time of the two to three weeks of um you know being in the hospital then that could cause you to die we're going to put that to one side and not think about it that is a really really scary thought and it did throw us for a couple of days and obviously you know we were quite down I mean this is all happening to Warren but I feel I'm going through a lot of the similar emotions obviously not the same emotions as him but similar emotions and it is a lot to take on board so we have to just take it one step at a time we get through each round of chemo get to the next stage and then we worry about other things later in fact it, it's pointless to worry because you, why worry about things that you've got no control over so we try not to do that so that is the situation with the treatment at the moment i think i've mentioned before that warren has lost all his hair this is the thing that he's most concerned about the loss of his hair even though it's going to grow back he's not worried about the rest of it just that bit his eyebrows and his eyelashes have started to fall out now as well um, and that is making his eyes itchy because obviously your eyelashes stop all of the sweat and dust and stuff getting in. So he has used, having to use eye drops for that. And I put up all of his medication into a pillbox each week. And I have to say that this round of drugs that he's getting after this chemo session was very challenging to, to put into the pillbox because there was lots of different ones uh, and, and different times and and you know so many a day really complicated and i don't know how anybody who's on their own copes with any of this apart from being quite fatigued and having that uh infection he hasn't been too bad and, and when i say fatigued i don't just mean tired yes he is having naps throughout the day but fatigue is when you just you're exhausted you literally you know you walk from the the living room to the kitchen and you're worn out um, and he is like that most days. We haven't been able to really get out for a walk anywhere, um, I'd say for about four weeks now. But hopefully that will improve and we might be able to get out and do a little walk because we have been told trying to try keep things as normal as possible and do, you know, things that you would normally do within your yeah, capabilities. So we are going to try and do that. I think he's mostly frustrated that he can't get out and do stuff because you know we were going away for weekends before all of this happened and it's only it's only been like three months and it feels like our life's just gone in a completely di different direction so we can't go for weekends we're not going for days out can't just go for a walk around the shopping center it, it it's frustrating it is really frustrating for him i mean he was a well he is a self-employed painter and decorator so he's got a, he had a physical job you know he was there every day sometimes late at night um and it, to go from that to sitting in the house doing you know jigsaws and lego or whatever he's doing is quite frustrating for him now on top of all that because warren was um self-employed painter and decorator we've got no income. Uh, now he can't work, he physically can't go to work. We didn't have critical uh, injury, critical illness cover. Uh, we did have life insurance, but that didn't cover critical illness. So we didn't have any, well, we had a little bit of savings, but we kind of exhausted all that. We didn't have enough savings. 
and we've only got my income from YouTube, blogging and any books I produce, which is very, very small. I'm lucky if I'm getting £100 a month from that. So we've had to apply for Universal Credit. This is a whole new ball game for us because it's not something we've ever had to do before. We've never had to rely on benefits. So we had to apply for Universal Credit and it took about six weeks to get anything from them and what they're going to pay us is £617 a month. Now I'm sure you can understand it, that I don't know how people live on that um, but I'm not going to be defeated by it. I contacted the mortgage people and they uh they're going to get back to me this week on whether they can give me a three month payment break. They will be able to do it, they said, whichever way they um, decide to work it out after the break. I've obviously got to pay it back. So we're going to get a three month payment break, which is backdated to last month. So that should take us up to December. My daughter Nicola very kindly set up a GoFundMe page for us and I am so grateful to everybody, to all of my viewers who have contributed to that. You don't know how how grateful I am for it. It meant the amount that that has been raised in that has been enough to pay three months mortgage and have a little bit left over um, for anything else that may come up. So I'm so grateful for that. We are quite overwhelmed by that and by all of the comments that everybody's been leaving on YouTube. Um, just so kind, so kind of you. I will leave a link to the GoFundMe page. Do not feel obligated to put anything into it. Please don't. I'll leave the link in case you want to or in case you want to see how it's going. I'll leave that in the description box below that has really helped with our mortgage and took a weight off my mind as we're going through this because I don't want Warren to worry about it. So I'm kind of taking on all of that responsibility. Um, we have, we, we contacted the council tax people. They have given us a pretty good reduction in council tax. I contacted Northumbria Water. Um, they have given us a small discount on the water bills, so that was okay. The Macmillan people, or it was actually the Universal Credit, uh, it was actually the, the Citizens Advice Bureau person that was recommended to us from Macmillan, give us a lot of advice, was very, very helpful on the things that we could get and claim for. Warren has also claimed for personal independence payment, which we were told can take four to six months to come through. So we haven't gotten anything from that yet. Um, and that's not guaranteed that we'll get it. So I'm hoping that my my YouTube channel will grow. Um, you know, I'll get more sponsorship things, more sponsorships on my blogs where brands want to pay me. Uh, to talk about products, but I'm only selecting a very few amount of things at the moment. I want things that are really relevant to me and I feel that are really relevant to my audience. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, anything I earn, I have to report to the Universal Credit people, so it probably bring that down. It'll meet in the middle somewhere. So as well as having all of the stress of the lymphoma, You've got all of the stress of the the income and coping with that. And it's just, it is quite a, a roller coaster. And it's something I'd never thought about before. And my heart goes out to anybody who is having to deal with it because there should be a much easier way to cope with all this than all of the hassle that you have to go through. So the emotions are all over the place. It's stressful, it's worrying. It is emotional. One day I'll be up um, and the next day I'll be down and be crying. And it's like I, I'm so lucky that I've got um, a close family who are there on hand, really close by, as well as close, you know, emotionally um, to help. I don't drive. So both my son and my daughter drive. So that's been really useful to us. We all keep in touch on a daily basis and 
it, it's really good. We're obviously not seeing the grandkids as much as we were, which is stressful in itself. Um, but hopefully this is all all going to be worth it because this Nordic treatment that Warren's having is the 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 best chance of pus pushing the mantle cell lymphoma into a long-term remission. We are members of a, uh, a Facebook group, a mantle cell lymphoma group, which has been really useful and really supportive for us. And there is people in there who have had the Nordic treatment and have had mantle cell lymphoma for 10, 15 years. So fingers crossed that that will happen for Warren. Of course, there are people who have gone into remission after the treatment and it's lasted maybe two years, three years. But, you know, it is what it is and we have to just hope that things are gonna work out for the best. So yes, it is a lot to cope with, but we are trying to stay positive. Um, I am quite a positive person. I've always said I'm a glass half full person. Warren is very positive as well, mostly. We do have our down days, but on the whole, we are staying positive and it's lovely to read all your comments so please continue to put them in there so i hope you found this interesting like i say i'm doing it i'm not doing it to get sympathy or even to get money on the gofundme page i'm not doing it for that reason at all i'm doing it because it helps me to get it off my chest and like i said if i can help anybody else that's going through a similar thing then all the better. So thank you so much for listening to us. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.